ovulated and very tight and almost like a pogo stick, if you will, in the movement. And this is something that I see in a lot of horses that are being ridden and a lot of horses that are being um, uh, led or, or, you know, where there's something new or something different occurring or anything like that. And where people have not recognized how much of the time the horse is carrying this constant tension, even if the horse is not heavy on the lead rope or heavy on the reins. And so this is where I always come back to these things. Is your horse light or is your horse soft? And most horses that you see, especially in a lot of the examples, groundwork examples of horses who never hit the end of that lead rope. I mean, there's a big old loop as the humans handling the lead rope as they're doing things. It always looks like they're slack. And yet when you look at the horse, they're very tense and you'll see very wide eyes you'll see big nostrils you'll see lip where the muzzle might be uh, have wrinkles in it from the tension or peaks over the horse's eyes or you'll see the ears very rigid and not moving so even though that horse is never heavy on the rope if you watch their movement it will be very tight and sewing machine like so it's very upright short choppy steps doesn't matter about the conformation of the horse it will be unnatural movement and in a lot of the turns you'll see that the horses become very unbalanced well then when we add speed if we were riding a horse like that that is where we get that horse who feels like they're always like leaking out or drifting through the turn or if we're working on flying changes or rollbacks it feels like our horse can't get underneath them or maybe taking off for the jump it always feels like the horse is sort of halfway chipping in and then landing in a heap on the other side all of these different things doesn't matter the type of riding doesn't matter the scenarios comes from these tight braced unbalanced horses and the easiest place to start by raising that horse's we'll say mental presence where he's actually at physically and starting with that adaptability is starting from when we catch him starting from when we halter the quality of when we're leading him and so what i'm trying to show in these videos and i've done it with the hundreds of other videos i've posted of other horses is showing the opportunities that are overlooked day after day after day that there is so often people have this idea of we have to work on something and they think it has to be big and dramatic and they're like repeating things to practice so that the horse learns it and they're trying to go for that final outcome rather than as I mentioned to people working with horses should sort of be like if you were baking a recipe rather than fixating on like that outcome you want of that final product of whatever you're baking we need to look at the ingredients. First, do you have all the ingredients? Second, are you using quality ingredients? Third, do you have the right blend and balance of ingredients? You know, there's all these factors that are gonna contribute to the outcome of the end baked product. And I find with horses, people fixate on the end product. They want that outcome in order to be able to say, was it a successful situation with the horse? Was it a successful training? Was it a successful lesson? Was it a successful ride? Rather than going, how about if I keep refining all of the skills, whether it's in the human or that the horse has, and that the more refined the skills are, the more we can do a variety of scenarios without having to feel like we have to mindlessly, repetitiously run our horse into the ground until they just sort of stumble upon and kind of comply and we go, hey, they must be getting it because I've practiced it enough times. And then you go somewhere new and you feel like you're starting all over again.